So, we just changed our dock, or we were for anchor uh, for last week. Now we docked to this dock nearby, uh, so we could park the fan nearby uh, to bring all the equipment to the welding equipment and all the stuff I made uh, easier to the to the boat. So we're gonna unload it, everything, and see if it fits. So let's see. Here I hoist the large frame into the air using the dinghy's pulleys. When the frame is hanging at about the right height, I use the eight bolts to secure it back to the existing arch. This was an exciting moment, whether all my efforts to keep the screw holes aligned succeeded. Once it is attached again, my lovely helping father and I can install the last two frames above the Bimini. These are now secure with the first two bolts, one in the front and one in the back. Here I will weld the third attachment point later on. So, currently we're uh, away from the dock again, going to the anchorage. anchorage. Then we are um, with a head uh, inside the wind, which is, which is preferred uh, for welding, uh, so I'm out of the wind during welding. So uh, the new uh, steel bars are in place, on the back also, only the solar panels are, uh, we stored them in front, back to the anchorage, and uh, finish this, uh, this job. But yeah, he's also here, huh? Mau? Mau? Grogu? Don't mind the mess. It's real messy in here. But I want to show you guys uh, a bit of the behind the scenes how I, uh, what I'm doing at the moment. I'm at anchor at the moment, which is uh, a quite nice uh, place here. I have my welder. I have my generator, not sure if you can see it, yeah, generator. Right now I'm only welding on this not conducted table on the wood and stuff like that. So I can weld, um, I'm welding right now with the batteries on, but as soon as it's touching the, the boat itself, uh, I disconnect the batteries and everything. Um, and I'm quite glad that my generator is a 2 kilowatt generator. It runs this uh, welder. And so my welder, it's now off because the generator is off. I have uh, my bottle over there with uh, pure argon gas and comes out of the TIG torch, you call this. Um, and basically, it's very hard to show you guys. In here, you have like this cup and out of this cup com comes gas and this is your tungsten, uh, it's a metal um, and basically with this you want to have a sharp tip, this one is not uh, the one you uh, should use. It makes an uh, arc of electricity. You only need to have a few millimeters above the metal and then uh, start forming a puddle uh, with molten uh, metal. And that molten metal, you, you can add extra metal with one of these filler sticks, which is also um, stainless steel, 316 grade. And you fill in the puddle and it melts also into the puddle. So that's how you get like this puddles you see. I'm starting here um, on the left. I created a puddle, um, add some material, some of the filler. And with that, uh, I try to cover as well as the tube as the plate. And in the colors, you can see if the weld is um, proper cooled and not overheated. I can show you guys with what I already did. This is my tent. I removed right now the front part. I need to uh, had to re-weld this. 
uh, there had formed some cracks. I believe this is original piping, uh, so 15 years old. Um, it had some cracks, so which meant that the weld was um, too hot, probably, uh, as I'm told. Uh, so I uh, cut him in with an um, angle grinder and then re welded the crack basically. Below, it's way harder. What I learned it all depends how reachable is the place where you're welding. Because here on the table, that's why I'm doing there, I can turn, uh, turn it, but uh, yeah, in, in hard to reach places or uh, yeah, even where I cannot put my both hands at rest at something, uh, uh, it may be uh, one of the tubes here, uh, I used uh, on the back side here, I, I, I used uh, some ropes um, uh, to yeah, get a loop where my arm could rest in and with that my uh, uh, try to weld, but it's, yeah, it's quite hard. Uh, let's see, what was my plan? This frame is a bit backwards and it's, um, we saw here there is a little bit play in it and especially when there's load on the back like the dinghy when the dinghy is strapped up in the davits we saw that it, it has a hard time so we're not really sure if uh, without reinforcements um, I added some weight with the solar panels with the whole, a whole construction here so I uh, had for myself and to my own um, rest I had to put some reinforcement. So the pulling force from here, I made this tube here. We will weld this on here. Drill four holes here. This is the only piece that's going, yeah, all the, the angles are to the back, but this will help reinforce because otherwise the whole construction will, yeah, there's always a little bit of play and right now we're strapping it down on the roof because I know the roof there are a lot of places where stuff is mounted so the roof uh, as I saw is quite thick so the roof can handle some some uh, some pulling force but first we need to drill just a few holes but we need to measure out exactly where uh, we need to attach the bottom screws or not uh, which is in the ceiling this ceiling was removable, as is the, the other side. Let's say this side we could remove, but this side is all cocked up, so. Because we cannot remove the ceiling here, and because I found a similar lead spot amongst the spare parts, I will make an extra hole aligned with the other lights, which is almost underneath the tube. This way, I can still access it, and it won't show afterwards. This side is easier because this side can get loose. We did already did it for the radar cable. So we can lose this one and it probably will be around here. So we can reach it with our hands through the ceiling. Here we are trying to measure. We want to drill there the four holes we made here. Uh, we need to weld there. But first, we need to drill the few holes. Now we can finally mount the tube permanently. And of course with a lot of Sika flex involved.
the starboard side is fixed. Now to the port side. On the port side, the ceiling could be partly removed, but this made it a little more difficult to reach the nuts. But this too succeeded in the end. Then remove the excess sealant. First, disconnect all the batteries, and then the welding can begin. Because the wind blows the argon gas away from the weld, I use more liters per hour and we use cardboard to keep the wind out as much as possible. Because TIG welding is a slow process, I continue until well after sundown. And when this tube is finished, I think it will be enough for today. And we will start fresh again tomorrow. The next day... I'm at the back of my catamaran. This whole construction is new. Um, the davits are the original only original part here till there the rest is all new this is the original tube frame where also the boom is attached to um, this can hold some weight but they added davids originally but this boat is i tried to make it as light as possible but it's a bit heavier than my previous one only like 25 kilos or something but then 25 plus instead of 12 liters 24 liters a few in the front this time so it all adds up now this tube is the only bit that really is supporting the weight they're um, bolted up top with eight bolts in total uh, so as you can see the construction will wants to do this wants to dive down and i added a good 50 kilos at least with this it can hold it probably only with the two in front but what i wanted better save the story i think how you say it the pivot point is over there so it wants to do this this is the, the only thing we need to to do is uh, as back as possible so this is literally the back of the boat i have those two tubes and it will first go a little bit here and then i bended it and it goes right to there should easily hold the dinghy now um, plus the added weight of the solar panels and the whole construction I only have the banded tubes and the square plates prefabricated on board. Now we are going to complete the build. First, we fix the stainless steel plate with two of the four bolts on the back of the boat. And then I can spot weld it together. The top of the tube is temporarily held in position with tape. Then I can take it off to weld it on the table. This so I don't burn the gel coat and polyester no more and it welds a lot easier. This was the port side. Now we are going to do the exact same thing on the starboard side. Drill. Two of the bolts through, through the hill material thingy. 
it so we can TIG weld it together. Then we take it off and make sure it's uh, all welded up before we weld the last weld we'll be, we will here in this here. So a little bit further in this quest. Right now I already welded this side completely. Made it grease free. Here where we gonna attach it. Uh, also the grease that bored all the holes for the bolts. Uh, and yeah, Sika Flex. Uh, as always a lot of Sika Flex. Let's see if we can uh, test fit it or place it the, for the last time. Let's see. So it's on. See, it's bolted, Sika flexed, welded completely through and through. This like here. Now only spot welded here. And here the same. It's already in place. Some are not the prettiest welds, but it works really well. This is nice and close, but I had a small miscalculation on this end. So we have a little a little bit of a gap to uh, to fill tomorrow. But what we will do, there's one um, free dock over there. Uh, we're gonna park it uh, or dock it uh, with our, our stern to the dock. Probably use my anchor. Um, so uh, we can stand on the dock um, and I just can stand and make the welds. I think that's uh, the best thing. And that those two are the last two welds and then we're done. Yeah. Whew. The next morning. A bit of a trial for like the Mediterranean uh, to park in. Use the anchor uh, and backed off to uh, to the dock. As you can see, we're still off the dock. A lot of fenders, to be sure. But now we can uh, get here real easy to uh, to weld this last two welds. Uh, Otherwise, on Anchorage it was not doable. So let's see if we can uh, fix it. Last day of welding, then we're done, finally. Unfortunately, I didn't feel much of welding this day, but I think you now have an idea how it's done. We're finished. I will show you guys uh, from here. Like, once again, not the prettiest, but it's, uh, it's closed, which, uh, not sure if you can see it. So it's not the prettiest, but it's uh, strong welds and uh, proper welds. Uh, it's all closed, so uh, no water can get in. So uh, we wait to cool down and then drop the solar panels back in and then we're, uh, we're done. Woohoo! Nice one! So I hope this explained a little bit what uh, everything I had to do to make this whole solar panel arch uh, reality that it's supposed to be like four or five days of work uh, it uh, eventually has been more than three and a half weeks so um, yeah but doesn't matter because eventually everything is done and installed on the boat and everything works as it should so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode once again uh, leave a like and subscribe that really helps me um, and yeah, see you in the next episode. Till then, way!